It's a new month. It's a new theme. So we are just FYI using um, Practicing Peace by White Eagle as a guide this month. I was guided to do this with uh, by Spirit. We normally don't use something like this, but this will be fun because we always love it. And you know, it's always God guided anyway. So, all right. Let us begin. One of the first things that people ask me when they come into metaphysics is they ask me, how can I hear God? Cindy, you hear God. How can I hear God? I need to do that. And so I'm, you know, try to encourage, but let's kind of work on that a little bit today, okay? How do we hear anyone? When I teach the psychic development, which is to teach people to perceive the subtle vibrations with which they perceive all the time anyway, but to learn to realize that you're perceiving it and learn to read it, the first thing that we do is we talk about how you take energy in. And there are three levels that we talk about, and every one is stronger in one of them than the other. The first is, um, is how we perceive information. The first is clairvoyant. Y'all know that term, clairvoyant. A clairvoyant sees a vision. They're seers. They see things. You know, everybody's aware of that. You know when you do. Clairaudient is someone who hears. Go left, go right. They hear words. They hear guidance. The, sec the third is clairsentient, and those are your feelers. They feel energy and they respond based on what they're feeling. Those are the three. If you listen with your strength, all will come, become stronger. So when you think about listening to other people, let's just talk about listening to other people in the world now. So if you tend to say, oh, I see, oh, I see, you probably are more clairvoyant. If you tend to say, I hear you, you're probably more clairaudient. If you say, I get it, or I feel you, man, you're probably more clairsentient. So we speak our lead talent all the time. But remember, we're all of them. So as we open up with one, they all grow and they all get stronger and stronger because we're aware of it. We're aware of it. Your dominant one, lead with. We had a council meeting the other day. And um, Jim, we were talking about an issue that needed to be resolved. And I'm clairsentient. I'm a feeler. I will feel what you are saying, man. I feel you. So I get, I feel what you mean as the words are coming out your mouth. So Jim is offering a solution for this issue that we're working on. I am not feeling Jim. <laughs> <laughs> he is in a neutral space. There's nothing for me to perceive. And I said, well, say that again. Now I'm listening. I've turned on the audio. OK, I'm listening to the words. OK, I s don't get it. I can't feel it. I hear the words. They make no sense to me. We're talking about something outside landscaping related, which I have no files for. <laughs> what do I know about landscaping? So I, don't, I can't feel it, and I hear the words. You can say them 5,000 times. I heard those words. I still cannot understand what Jim is saying. So it moved on a little bit, and then it came back, and Jim said something else, and, and in my mind, I saw a picture, and I saw what he was saying. The vision opened, and I saw what he was talking about, and I laughed. I said, that's perfect. And everybody thinks I'm crazy because we'd moved on. But his solution was perfect. But do you, I want you to hear me. I couldn't feel him because he was neutral. I couldn't. I had no files. I'm hearing the words. They mean nothing to me. But when spirit put it together and gave me the vision, then all three of my senses came together. And I got it. I got it. So be aware that I share this with you so that you understand there are times, can you find times when you feel frustrated in communicating with someone? So just knowing this little bit of information, now you can shift channels. Okay, now let me just listen. Okay, now let me feel, let me see what I can see. Shifting channels, very helpful, I think. When people talk physically, there is always a subtle 
sharing of information in that moment. Words say something, but the energy says something else. You guys know this, correct? Have you ever been listening to someone? You go, what do you mean? I yeah. And you've heard the words, and you do not understand. Because the subtle energies that you, are, that you are receiving doesn't match the words, and you can't quite put it together. It's like, oh, my God. We are always communicating under the words we use. Always communicating under the words we use. Shut up. What did I just say? I don't want to hear what you have to say. Oh, shut up. I can't really embrace what you're saying. Shut up. I cannot believe what you just said. That's amazing. Same words. Different. Did I scare you guys with the first one? <laughs> Who is she talking to? <laughs> shut up. Different energies, same words. Now, those are obvious, but it happens all the time in our communication, okay? Subtle things. We understand when we do this. We understand that we're expressing energy. The overt examples are easy to understand, but how are we when we're trying to communicate? Spirit said this, when we can successfully communicate, we can have a cooperative culture. When we don't feel heard, we freeze in our position. When we, are, when we feel heard, we are willing to shift to something better. Not different, not worse, better. When you have been heard and you feel heard, you're willing to move. I can move to better. But if I'm not being heard, I lock it down. Somebody better damn well hear me, excuse me. Somebody better hear me. <laughs> Somebody better hear me. Because I'm stuck in my space. Right? Okay. Every time I talk with anyone about a divorce or a failure in a relationship, you guys know what the one underlying fact always is. Communication. Cross board. Without fail, no exceptions. Always communication. Communication. Failed relationships. So a person gets stuck in a position they cannot be heard. They cannot be heard. I know of a young lady who um, was divorcing and had already moved out, was separated from her husband, and her husband uh, called her and said, let's just go have dinner. And she was guided to take her journal with her because, you know, they'd been through a long time, and so she took her journal. And she opened the journal, and she read one page to him. And it was a page of her feelings, of how she felt about the relationship in him. And he listened, and he said to her, why did you never tell me this? And she said to him, I told you every day for two years. Every day for two years. And I know that he had nothing to say at that point. There's nothing he could say. And I know in his mind, I guess in his mind, I imagine in his mind, scenes started popping up of every time he heard those words. And he would dismiss it. Or he would say, oh. And then when she started crying about it, he would say, oh, you're just weak. You're not that strong woman I married. And he would start creating stories for his inability to pay attention to the messaging. But in that moment at that dinner, he heard. He heard. And you know what's really funny? Every single thing on that list was fixable. There was nothing insurmountable on that list. But it would have taken cooperation and communication. He had nothing to say, and they divorced. It was kind of a done deal at that point. But do you hear what I'm telling you? When we stop opening to listen, and it's not just guys. I'm not throwing you guys under the bus. It's everybody. When we stop listening and we stop communicating, we cannot find solutions. And maybe the solution was we're done. I'm not saying they should have stayed married. Maybe the solution was, hey, we're done. Hey, we're done. High five. Good job. You know, let's make this work. You know, let's divorce beautifully. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Okay. So we have to trust as metaphysical Christians that we all go through the experiences we go through. So we have no regrets, but let's create awarenesses, awarenesses of communication. So God, our communication 
to God. We think we are listening to God, but how often when we talk to God are we in the same stuck position? How often is our prayer the same prayer we prayed last week? Same, same thing we're asking for last week? Same for we're Same, same. Hey God, hey God, hey God, hey God, hey God. <laughs> and we've been, what have we might not have been listening to? God's answer. We might have been not hearing God's answer. So, do we actually seek for the next step? Do we actually try to listen? Okay. A lot of people have said to me over the years, and I was going to look it up for y'all, and I'm, I apologize, I did not. But um, they will say to me, until God gives me a burning bush, I'm not listening. And just for you that are not Bible-based, um, Moses, when he took the children of Israel out of uh, captivity and they went into uh, the wilderness and he went to Mount Sinai and that's where he got the Ten Commandments, well, God appeared to him in a burning bush. So, so he could not deny <laughs> that the God's talking to him. You see, that was his proof. And so people take that burning bush analogy and they want God to burn a bush in front of them. Okay, that's good. Do you think, if you're not listening to God and you want a burning bush, do you think if there's a burning bush, you'll see it? No. <laughs> the house could burn down around you and you wouldn't see it. <laughs> no, you won't see it because you're not listening. And I have other people that say this, and you're probably a part of this group. When God tells me three times, I'll do it. <laughs> and I have clients all the time, and they'll say to me, Cindy, that's the second time this week Spirit has told me to do that because I would have said something for them, you know, channeling from Spirit on their behalf. And I say, well, why wait to the third time? <laughs> why, well, let's do it. Because <laughs> in their mind, they're going, that's the second time. Wow, that's cool. No, I don't see feet moving here. <laughs> I see awareness. Three times and I might move my feet. So here it wants move. Second time is the reminder. But if you're not listening then, you're just going to go, that was so cool. I got told three times. Did you do it? No. The cosmic two by four <laughs> then you get the cosmic <laughs> two by four. Yeah, that's next. <laughs> All right. Why do we make God prove himself? I speak as if it's a him. Let's just use that as be that okay right now. God's, we treat God as if he needs to prove himself when we are the ones asking. God, talk to me in a way I can understand. Talk to me. But yet we don't listen in a way that he can talk to us. All right. God speaks in the subtle fields. There is always clarity, but there is not always understanding. If you are clairaudient and you hear the words, sometimes you get direct guidance. Do this. And you go, well, 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 God, I don't know what to do after that. I don't know why am I doing that. What's the plan after that? I haven't seen the whole thing yet. Well, you're not clairvoyant. You're clairaudient. Do it. Do this. There's another instruction after that. And this and this and this. Do you understand? If you're told to do something, there's another instruction that will come when you do it. Hmm. But we need to have the full understanding. When we have faith and we can step forward in listening, the conversation continues. That's the, really the key. When we have faith and we can step forward listening to God and following the guidance, even if it's just clairsentient, it's a feeling. You're following that guidance. The communication will continue. You're never dropped without guidance, unless there's a purpose for that. All right. The subtle fields and listening in the subtle fields. I wanted to share with you out of this little book now, we're moving to this, what White Eagle says. You want to listen to the world, to the spirit world, to listen to the words of love spoken by your beloved in the beyond, by your guide, your teacher, and your master. Learn then to listen first to the people on earth, to give your whole attention to the one who is speaking to you. And then he goes on to say, and then you'll be able to speak to all the other, the angels. But if we're not listening to the people on the earth who are speaking to us, how can we pick up the subtle fields, the way, means of communication of God? All right? So they give us two steps. And the first one is a very easy step. Let's see what page this is on, 23. 
And you'll never guess what this step is. Anybody in yours? Patience. Ah, patience. Patience? Patience. The most difficult lesson to learn is patience. Impatience holds back many a soul who is on the spiritual path. Patience. When we think about patience, how often are we allowing ourselves to sit in the moment and let life reveal itself to us? Sit and let life reveal itself to us. We're listening to our own beingness. We're listening to the spirit. Most of us want to move to an answer. We want to move to the experience we want. We want to move to understanding. Listening patiently means you have no idea where you are going and you are riding along. And I want you to think with me when you're talking to other people. How often do you listen patiently for what they are saying? Even when you've heard it a hundred times before. They may change direction this time. You don't know. (laughs) You don't know. And maybe you didn't listen to the subtle fields. Maybe you didn't listen to the subtle fields. Patiently feeling, I don't know where they're going. And if they go down that very same room, they they always go down because they're on their opinion and they're stuck in their opinion because they don't feel like they've been heard. Perhaps you could say to them, I see or I understand or I get or I hear, whatever your lead is, what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You know, I've heard this, I've heard you mention this before. Is there something you need to do about about it? Do you, is there some act that you need to take around it? Now, am I condemning them? Am I criticizing them? Around the mirror, go around, here we go. I'm not even intimating that to them. I'm saying, I hear you, that is interesting. Is there something you might want to, I mean, it must mean something to you or you wouldn't be saying it again. You, is there something missing that, that you need to look at? And you know what they will do? They will stop and look at their own subtle field. Whoa, maybe you're right. Maybe I am attached. And then the conversation is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I should make a phone call. Yeah, why don't you? Perfect. And now we're building some new experience for you both. Just because we patiently listened to someone. Do you know when you're dealing with little ones that have a consciousness? They're as smart as we are. Do not kid yourself ever for a nanosecond. But sometimes their ability to articulate can be labored. You know, when they're eight or seven or six and they're throwing sentences together, they are trying to tell you something. Even when they're babies, they're trying to tell you something. And if you go spit it out, (laughs) come on, get the point. But when you patiently look at them, and don't say a word verbally, just look at them. Okay, I'm following you. I'm not, okay, I'm listening to you. You'd be surprised how much you learn. What really can come out of their little consciousness. And you get it, you hear it, you understand it. Just because somebody is not speaking at your level or your language does not mean communication can't be really thorough, really in-depth. Do you all get the patience part? Can you realize that we're impatient with one another? Now, if you're on an agenda working, it's like, I don't have time to listen. I will tell people, no, not right now. I got to go. Hold that thought. Tell me in a minute. Because I know I'm not going to listen. I know I'm doing this over here. But I will always come back and go, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Tell me. (laughs) That honors them, even though some people think you're being a little whatever. But it's still, it's honoring of them. Okay. Listening means you have no idea where you're going and you're riding along. It doesn't matter where they go, okay? All right. Patience with others also requires patience with self. We have to give ourselves time to let our voice reveal a new idea to us. We don't just sit and go through ruminating through the old files of every time I've ever faced this challenge or every time I've ever said this or why is this happening again? We want to calm, patience, let go, let go. 
What do I need to know? Just ask yourself that question. What do I need to know about myself right now? What do I need to know? What do I need to know? And sit with it. And let it come and let it talk to you. And be patient with the communication. If you will even sit for three to five minutes and ask that question, you may not get an answer. You get up, do, go about your business. Something's going to drop in your head when you're cooking or when you're driving or something. It's, it's, and it's going to be from you, about you. And you all know when you have those moments, don't you? And they're amazing. All right. That was the first key to good communication communication, beginning to open up our ability to really understand subtle fields. The second key is this. Now you can guess this one. Everybody would have guessed this one first. Love. Everybody goes, I knew that. <laughs> love. So, love. Patience, however, is necessary in order to experience love. Ah, good to know. When we speak of love, we don't mean sentiment or emotion. It is the love of spirit. It's how you recognize the spirit in other people. Love refrains from judgment, never attributes motives to another, for God alone knows the heart of the companions along the way. Love must be your innermost and spontaneous response toward every soul you encounter. I'm going to read that again. Love must be your innermost and spontaneous response toward every soul you encounter. Love. So how do we do that when we're communicating? How do we move into love with total strangers? How do we move into love? One of the things that I can recommend is that while you're listening to someone, do you listen like this? Some people do. If they're clear audience, like just talking to my ear. But I would, they do. But I would recommend eyeball to eyeball. Of course, that's my style. But I would recommend look them in the eye. <laughs> Even if they squirm away. <laughs> look them in the eye. And it, I, I can only do it to, oh, I love everybody. <laughs> but you look at someone, even if you don't know them, and you look them in the eye. And you can, in your mind, say, I love you. I love you. You know, and you just feel this connection. Or you can say, I behold the Christ in you. And it doesn't mean that you have to know anything more about that person. They are animated. They're God's child. They are the Christ. They are your brother and sister. We are in a sea of love. It doesn't mean they owe you, you owe them. There's no emotional. It's just a, a, a feeling of respect and if I honor the Christ in you, I'm, I'm ready to listen, you know? He has a lot to say. <laughs> That's my son for you guys that don't know. <laughs> so we can move into love before we hear what someone's ready to tell us. And if someone's coming up to complain at you, don't you want to move into love first? Hey, love. Yeah. Okay, now what? Really? And you hear the words. <laughs> but what else are you hearing? The subtle field. You're perceiving what's going on under the words. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. We're hearing those words, and we might see rah, rah, worry or concern. And so if, if she's going, rah, 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 and I see worry and concern, what's the first thing I can do? I can just calm her down. Hey, I, I see that you're real concerned about this. Let me, okay, we'll get to this. We'll get to the details in a minute, but take a breath. I'm, you got me. I'm here with you, you know? So we can talk to them and communicate with them based on the subtle energies and then deal with what the facts are that they're upset about. You see, just approaching it with love. Communication, very powerful. Love for self is now the next part of love. Loving self, we have to be patient with self and we have to love self. Patient with those that we talk to, love those we talk to, listen to those we talk to. Most everything that we have issues with can be resolved. Plus, minus, upside down, it can be resolved. 
if it is listened to and people are open. Okay? You want to hear God. You want to hear God. Everybody wants to hear God. Okay. The language of God is the subtle energy field. If you don't hear it from another human, how can you hear it? How can you hear it? It's that beautiful energy. Even when we say we got a message on TV or someone, someone commercial and, oh, my God, I got it. You, that commercial played a million times. You've seen it a million times. There was a subtle energy field from spirit behind it that got you. I heard it. I heard God that time. I got it. I got it. You see? So the more we are communicating with one another in that patient, loving, kind way, the more we are open and receptive to hearing the answers to the questions, the guidance, whatever we are looking for from spirit. How easy is it to let our daily life prepare us for our spirit? And I know some of you can practice this immediately today. And some of you will wait to have a really big encounter with somebody, and I hope you remember patience and love, patience and love, patience and love. Okay, I'm going to stop right now. Patience and love, patience and love. Okay. Okay, patience and love. And then steps. It doesn't matter how you choose to call forth your lesson. We will all have them. So we can have little ones, or we can have big blows, big blow-ups. It's our choice. All right. Communication clear today? Do you have some tools? Let's go within real quick. We'll anchor this in. <coughs> Just take a breath. Father, Mother, God, we open now to your presence. And I ask that the depth of your love just engulf us all. And I would invite each one of you just to imagine, image in or feel a beautiful column of light coming over you. Feel the safety in this column of light. And now I would invite you to let your focus just go to your heart. You can put your hand on your heart if you need to. Just let your focus go to your heart. The light in me, the light in this column, the light I am. And feel yourself lifting up into a greater space of God love. Just begin to feel God love engulfing you. And I want you to breathe it into that heart light, the light I am. Father, Mother God, we ask to feel your presence. Just breathe it in. And now we are open, and we ask for a word of blessing to each. Just a word of blessing, Father, Mother, God, if we could hear a word of blessing. Just whatever comes to you is appropriate. Just breathe it in. If nothing comes now, something will come later. And begin to see the most beautiful star in front of you now, just beginning to grow strong, bright, multidimensional star. Beautiful energy of pure love beginning to form right in front of you. Filled with infinite potential, filled with love, peace, hope, joy, filled with God energy, God light, this beautiful star. And just see it. And become aware as you breathe in, it just comes into the energy above your head and begins to shower you with its light. Beautiful star showering you with light and love. 
The universe blesses me now. I am whole and perfect. Feel that love you have for God, God's love for you. And feel the beautiful presence of Jesus Christ as he appears by your side. Looks in your eyes and says you are perfect. Whole and perfect. And Father, we thank you for this blessing. And I ask that each one just breathe. Feel the Christ as he lifts you back into that light and begins to move you back into your physical body, back into the awareness of the chair, into this room. And we love you, Father, Mother, God, and we are so grateful for this life. And take a breath. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Could you feel that beautiful love coming over you? Did anyone get a word? Immediately you got a word. (laughs) Good. Good, good. And could you see the light? The star? You are clairsentient. You felt. Clairaudient. You heard. And clairvoyant. You saw. God can reach you now. (laughs) Ask specifically for what you want. Say, yay, God. Yay, God.